Our next speaker is Don Thomas, who will go over what we know very well in Humboldt County as the uh, kinetic compendium. Everyone. My name is Dawn Thomas, and by day I'm just a mild-mannered middle school art teacher. <laughs> and then one glorious weekend in May, I transform into something else. So how many people here um, have seen the race? Should be everybody. How many racers are here? Wow. I know Donna's here. Donna Moxon, the glorious June Moxon. So I didn't discover kinetic sculpture racing until 2013. Um, I saw it on YouTube and I said to my partner, we should do that. <laughs> And he was like, okay. <laughs> so we bought a welder and we uh, just started trying to build something that could go over everything that's in the race. So the race is a 52 mile race these days. It starts on the land. You know, we have, uh, we go out to Manila, there's a sand portion. Um, we're right here in the bay, we come up at Warfinger. Um, it's, you know, it's, it gets grueling about halfway through the second day when you're like, yeah, this is just halfway and we've, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time, a long time. Um, and I, I, the first year we, we did the race, I was just completely overwhelmed by like how much it was. <laughs> Just everything, the people, the sculptures, everything. And I thought, um, you know, there's got to be a book. I just thought, well, and I could see it in my head. You know, it's going to be this big coffee table book that someone wrote, you know. Because if you've ever been to Burning Man, you can't swing a cat without hitting, like, a giant Burning Man book. So I looked and I looked and there's just, there's nothing. There was, like, crazy contraptions you know, from 1975 that you could buy on eBay for like $100. Um, and then there was Hobart's book, which I purchased, um, and just, you couldn't even make out half the things in the photographs. And it was like, what, where, how can people see this race? So, and then I found I was talking to friends down in Santa Rosa where I live and I'd try to explain to them what I was gonna go do every year. They'd look at what we were building and they'd look at all this stuff and they were like, what is this? And I would try to explain it and they would just be like, so it's a bike race. It was like, not quite, it's a, and, and they would just be like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is. So I decided to write the book. Well, that'll be easy. <laughs> So how do I move things forward? Okay. So as you know, it's considered the triathlon of the art world. Um, and uh, this last race was the 50th anniversary race. Um, it's been won the last three years by Team Trilobike, um, who started racing the same year that we started racing. Um, and now they're retiring, so we're hoping we can finally win because <laughs> with them out of the way, um, yeah. Amazing, amazing art. So um, I got lost. Uh, oh well, I'll just keep going. So this was the first year that I raced, and what happened was 
um, I had purchased a welder. <sighs> And um, I thought, well, this would be easy. It's like hot gluing, right? You just, um, you just take two pieces of metal, <laughs> you stick a plate and an axle, and you just weld it on there, and it's going to be fine. So we're coming up here at Warfinger, and the wheel just cracks off, right? It's like, no. <laughs> and I look, and my weld is just peeled off, you know? It's like, oh, OK. So we uh, strapped the, uh, someone had a bike, of course, because they have a lot of bikes. And this is just uh, duct tape and uh, wire. <laughs> and there's, there's like part of a branch or something in there. I don't know. It was like something we found at Crab Park. And then we got that wheel on there. And we made, the, uh, we made it through the rest of the race, switching off who was pedaling. And then the other person would just kind of walk or push or something. So that first year, the goal was, we got to make it to Ferndale, right? There's just no rest till Ferndale. And you got to make it to Ferndale. You can't trailer it, because trailering is unglorious, right? And it's for the glory, so you can't do that. So we made it. Um, and then we were hooked. We were like, but now we have to ace. We have to, we have to do the thing, right? We have to, you know, we have to do it without, you know, all this stuff. So that's kind of like the end of my life was just over then, and now I'm just kind of a kinetic racing devotee. <laughs> just all my, all my energy goes to like, what's our theme next year? We gotta build the art, we gotta redo this thing, we gotta, you know, we gotta write a book. Um, and it has to be 600 pages, and we have to talk to people for three years nonstop that we don't know about the race, and we have to hear every single Hobart story that's ever been on the planet, and, and then that's only like, it turns out, like one hundredth of like all the Hobart stories that, <laughs> that exist, and there could, there could be like a whole five volume book thing on just Hobart stories, you know, so. Um, Anyway, that was our first race. Oh, picture's not there. So this was something that Hobart used to say a lot. We are adults having fun so that children want to grow up. They desire to grow up. And Hobart was great in that he used to work with a lot of groups that um, had recovering addicts in them or uh, suicidal people. And he would get them interested in the race, like especially with an organization down in Ventura. And they would kind of, like me, you know, they would have, now we have a purpose for our life. We're kinetic sculpture racers. <laughs> so um, that's the quote. So here's Hope Bart goofing around. Um, he, uh, they asked him if he would be the model for their hairdressing salon, and so he, um, he sat for that. Um, and I love this picture, uh, you know, of, of Jack, like, mm -hmm, with Hobart. And I really did find a lot of um, good material at the Humble Historical Society's building, um, and I was helped a lot by Morgan. Harvey, who let me rummage around through Hobart's photo albums and boxes and things like that. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. So here's the, uh, you know, here's Hobart on the pentacycle. And he went over to Bob Brown's house, who lived in Eureka, um, a, a little while before the race to kind of, you know, make sure that Bob was still on track um, for, the, uh, for the big race. Uh, so as you may or may not know, uh, you know, Jack wanders down to Hobart's house to see what he's working on, and it's the pentacycle, and he says, well, I, I can build something better than that, and I, I'm going to challenge you to a race, you know, and so they had their race announced, um, and when the race day happened, there were actually 11 participants, um, and there was a woman there. Um, even in the first race, there was a lady racing, and there was like a sewing machine on a platform or some crazy thing. Um, but the first winner of the first race, of course, was Bob Brown um, and his tortoise. Um, and the way that he actually rode it was uh, he lay on his stomach. 
So his head is like where the turtle's head is, and he's inside there, and it has smoke that comes out of it, and you know, it laid eggs, and so he was, he was the first winner. And um, fun fact, Hobart never won a race or even got an ace. He never, yeah, it was for the glory. So after um, 69, 70, like five years of the street race in Ferndale at the end of the uh, art fair that they had festival every year, um, Jack and Joe uh, and Jim and Larry Eifert uh, formed a club called the Ferndale Explorers Club. Um, and Joe Coaches, who recently passed, he told me, he said, um, we made the club and we um, didn't invite Hobart because we knew it would piss him off. <sighs> and then he laughed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So the Ferndale Explorers Club, um, they went out. Here they are. There's Larry, Joe, Jack Mays, Jim Ottaway. They made their own uh, enameled um, little pieces. They had a whole club. They got together. They would have meetings. And they decided that instead of doing the street race, they were going to make their own race that was going to be way better. And what they were going to do is they were going to run and then like fly off of uh, Table Bluff uh, Hill. Like that was their best idea, you know? <laughs> and then they were like, well, maybe we could do like a cross country race or something. Um, so they, they went out with kayaks and camping gear and they sort of did this whole recon mission. Um, and I found all these photos, and Jim Ottaway's daughter had all his photo albums, and they were labeled, and he would write things like, Hobart wasn't here, you know, like, <laughs> he would like, write all this stuff, you know, and then, so this is the first hand-drawn map of the first, the idea for the first cross-country race, because in 1974, they started this cross-country race. So until then, it was just in Ferndale, and it was like a two-block race, more of kind of a spectacle, or um, you know, like Hobart would say, it's you know whoever can take the longest going down those two blocks gets the most attention, right? So <laughs> he would like figure out a way to take like an hour to get down the street, <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, that was the first map, and we actually still do a similar course to that now. Unfortunately, there were only three entries in the first cross-country race. So it was Hobart and Jack actually teaming up in the Bandini, um, the Watergate Streaker, which was a PG&E team, and then the Yo-Yo, which it took three day or took three weeks to actually get from the start of the race into Ferndale. <laughs> That was a whole story. <laughs> so, and this is it, you know, they, they had planned flotation for it, and they were gonna walk it, and the flotation's in the middle there, but then as soon as they rolled it into the water, they realized, oh, wow, this is just never gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna sit here. <laughs> so they ended up getting a, a toe, you know, but. Um, there was a lot of different races that they kind of tried out over the years to try to get away from just the one um, Mother's Day race. This race was called Junk Race, and the idea was, uh, I think they had like seven guys, and they said, okay, everybody bring a giant pile of metal junk, and in the morning we'll start welding, and then at the end of the day, we'll have a race and see who can uh, get down the street. Um, and this gentleman is Stan Bennett, who was a, also a sculptor, and he was also a photographer, and um, was had his uh, gallery near Hobart's in Ferndale. He wrote uh, Crazy Contraptions with Larry Eifert, which was the first book in 1975 about kinetic sculpture racing. 
he didn't include junk race in that, but I found a bunch of photos and I was like, this looks like a great thing. We should have this now. So, I mean, you know, this is before junkyard wars. So, I mean, this, they were just doing all this crazy awesome stuff. And uh, there's all these kids, they're like welding in the middle of the street and there's all these little kids like, Daddy, can I have some money for ice cream? You know? and you're like, wow, they just let it go. <laughs> 1976, here's Barbara Ludwig, um, who was Hobart's girlfriend. And this is Virgia Ort, and this is her husband, Bob, I think. And Bob actually lives near me in Santa Rosa, and he was able to tell me all kinds of crazy stories because he was really good friends with Hobart for most of his life. Um, and Barbara was his girlfriend when, um, like, when the cross-country race started into the 80s, and... Um, she was a racer, and Virgia was her main partner. And they really kind of helped spice up the race. Um, Barbara uh, invented the quote for the glory. She was in a, like a, a long dress, and she was wading out of the water. And some reporter asked her, why are you doing this? You know, this wet, muddy woman coming out of freezing cold water. And she said, for the glory. <laughs> and then she said, um, Hobart, this race is great. We've got all this stuff, but you don't have a queen. You need a queen. So she invented the rutabaga queen. And then she made herself the rutabaga queen. <laughs> I'm the rutabaga queen. I'm the one. I, the, I, am, I am the chosen one. So Barbara did a lot of crazy fun things. And this, uh, the Shaky Lady was built by Hobart, and it was sponsored by Shaky's Pizza. <laughs> of course, right? Aww. Hobart's bus was a good idea. <laughs> he just couldn't figure out how to get it to do anything besides be pushed. So if you were on Hobart's team, you were going to pull and push that thing for three days. So it's a little bit like Carl Mueller's machines, which arrive at Crab Park typically around 8 or 9, sometimes even midnight, 12 people on these giant machines. And it's just like unbelievable. So somewhere in the 80s, Ken Beidelman, Dwayne Flatmo, June Moxon start raising, and it's this kind of influx of art, creativity, and engineering that raises the race over the next 10 years to new levels. So until 1987, pretty much, if you could get there first, you won. So the Flying Golomke brothers won like six years in a row because they just had two 10-speed bikes together with some garbage cans for flotation, and they were just fast, and they just won every single year. Um, and then uh, Hobart added in um, art, engineering, and speed points to make it so that other racers could compete. Um, and Ken Beidelman, June Moxon, and Dwayne started creating these fabulous sculptures that were just like so beautiful and so well crafted and so good at traversing the sand and the water and everything. Um, and so this is just one of Ken Beidelman's uh, deliverance was the grand champion in 2007. Um, so in 1989, June Moxon won the grand championship with her enchanted evening slipper and then took off with Ken um, on this adventure that they called Kinetics Ag Across America. And it was like this giant epic journey where they just pedaled across the United States. Um, they brought their little dog uh, and they, all their stuff. And Ken, of course, was like fooling around with one of the spinners and broke his leg. And so he had to pedal with these arm 
bands that he hooked up to the pedals so that he could keep pedaling while his leg healed. And like that's a whole story too. It's just a, this Pacific to the Atlantic. And then after this, they came home and they got into the lab that they're still in now because Yakima decided to sponsor them. So that was another huge thing that happened was for the race was um, they started to get these really big sponsorships. Ooh, am I out of time? Are there questions? No? no. I'm going to skip ahead to that. Um, Oh, it's Dwayne Flama. Oh, it's June Moxon again. Oh, it's Mickey, the first woman to solo ace and first solo female kinetic champion. And Fifi from Baltimore and the dragon from Port Townsend. Uh, Army of Volunteers, the movie, the museum, the end is near. Oh, so um, the last slide uh, was the back page of this book. So this book is called Kinetic Compendium, and I have... Um, at the back table, I have cards in case you can't remember the name, but it's available on Amazon, and it's also available at your local um, Eureka Books. Um, and they carry that, this book. So you can just go in there and get it. Thank you so much. Thank you.